Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, April 9th, 2019, and today we're going to be going through some election data from the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination polls and the general election data between Donald Trump and a couple of Democrats in the state of Massachusetts. Now, first things first, um, the Democratic primary is closer than the general election, so that's going to be the most important thing that we do discuss today. Obviously, the general election is uh, very important, but it's not the next upcoming national election that we're all, we're all going to be worrying about. Obviously, Donald Trump is going to be the Republican nominee, but the Democratic nominee is still up in the air. We honestly do not know who's going to win, and some of these candidates haven't even announced, and that's pretty um insane that we have this many candidates that have announced and some have still yet to announce um and just looking at the data itself it does hold some interesting results a lot has come out about the vice president referring to joe biden um and you know it re really hasn't taken that much of a, a hindrance on his polling numbers i mean they're pretty consistent and in fact they've gone up uh since those things have come out but again things can change and it's really early into uh, you know the the list of people that are probably going to come out after this um so it really just depends on uh, the current atmosphere of the country uh, but mainly you're seeing the data on your screen right now. We do ignore a lot of these polls, like the President Trump job approval polls, Direction of the Country polls, Congressional job approval polls. First of all, Congressional job approval polls were never really important. They're always in the negative, and Direction of the Country is always on the wrong track. So it's really not too important to look at. But when we're looking at the President Trump job approval, approval polls, those show some interesting results, but they're not crucial to the 2020 election. And that may sound weird because it is a direct reflection of how the country feels about Donald Trump at this instant. But general election polls don't always coincide with uh, regular approval polls. Barack Obama would have not have won in 2012 if it was based off approval data. And Donald Trump probably won't win in 2020 if it's just based purely off that. And it's not just based purely off that. And we know that for a fact. Looking at uh, Donald Trump's approval rating uh, nationwide, let's see actually the average. Rasmussen Reports came out with an approved plus eight poll. I don't know where they got that number. It does not mix with any of the rest of them. Uh, and, you know, looking at it plus eight compared to a minus eight, then minus 11 consistently. I would say it's more on the negative side. Obviously, some polls are going to skew in certain favors. But when there's that one poll that really strikes out as something that's quote unquote wrong, you have to make a point, uh, and it's plus eight for Donald Trump in a sea of negative approval ratings. And I would say, yeah, it's about 44%, 45%. I'd say the more realistic number, probably 45 46%, but that's still underwater. I don't think his approval rating right now is at 53%. And looking at all this data, based off the amount of people that disapprove of him, he should be losing the 2020 race, right? Well, not so much. We're looking at a lot of uh, voters that may disapprove of the president and still vote for him. That's the case with many Democrats. If you look at Hillary Clinton's approval rating in 2016, low 30s, still got uh, more of the popular vote than Donald Trump. Donald Trump also in the low, low 30s and still won the Electoral College with over 300 electoral votes. So it's not exactly the best representation of the American electorate, but it does give you sort of an idea. But we're going to move on to more important data. We're going to briefly talk about the Massachusetts Trump versus Biden, Trump versus Sanders, Trump versus Warren polls. They aren't holding too much information, just I think that it is pretty interesting uh, that Warren is performing the least, uh, I guess, the worst out of all the Democrats. Um, Warren leads Donald Trump by 26%. Obviously, that's a large lead, never going to be conquered by Donald Trump in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, a plus 26 lead for Elizabeth Warren. You know, that's it makes sense. It's her home state. She should be leading by double digits. But Sanders leads by 28%, and I do understand that. A uh, progressive candidate in that type of state, I mean, leads in the Democratic primary poll right above it. But then Joe Biden leads by 10% more than Bernie Sanders. I think that's something that's really jumping out at me. Biden at 69%, Trump at 31%. Trump is at 36%, 37% with Warren or Sanders but only 31% with Joe Biden. I think that's pretty interesting. And I also think that the fact that Warren isn't performing the best out of all these Democrats in her home state uh, does say something about her as a candidate. And if we're looking up, uh, it's right there on your screen. Biden leads, sorry, no, Biden does not lead. Sanders leads Biden by 3%. And then Biden leads Warren by 9%. Overall, Sanders leads Warren by 12%. I think it's pretty interesting that Warren is in third place in her home state. This is the only state that she really should be running up the numbers, and she's not. And unfortunately for her, that's probably not going to change anytime soon. The fact that Pete Buttigieg is at 11% in the state of Massachusetts. A nobody is performing better than Better O'Rourke, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, Amy Klobuchar, Andrew Yang, Julian Castro, Tulsi Gabbard, John Delaney... <laughs> And I haven't seen Gillibrand mentioned on that list, so probably better than her, too. Uh, if we're just looking at that, a number of those people are senators, you know, former positions of power like secretaries, representatives, or current representatives. 
that's insane that a mayor from an in, from Indiana, a Republican state, is leading all these Democrats in the solid Democratic state, progressive state, might I add, of Massachusetts. And Warren doing getting third place, she's not really near Joe Biden. She's 9% away. 9% is not very close. Biden is only 3% away from Sanders, so he could technically get on that lead. Warren's behind Sanders by 12 and Biden by 9 in her home state. I think that really tells you something a lot about how she's going to perform in the Democratic primary. If you're not performing too well in your home state, that really tells you something. Hillary Clinton did phenomenal in Arkansas. She did better in Mississippi, but she did phenomenal in Arkansas in 2016 in the Democratic primaries. Okay, we look at Bernie Sanders. He beat Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, I believe, actually got single digits in terms of voting in the state of Vermont. Uh, actually, no, it might have been 17%, but it was still a huge, huge blowout for um Bernie Sanders in the state of Vermont, and that's expected. It's his home state. Now, Massachusetts is typically contested in the Democratic primary, but you never really see a person from their home state losing amongst Democrats. This is not even valuing in Republicans, okay? Losing amongst Democrats. That tells you a lot about the candidate themselves. But again, things can change. I'm not saying this is set in stone by any means, but it's just interesting that the earliest results, especially since everybody in Massachusetts definitely knows Elizabeth Warren, everyone there definitely knows Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders. Um, I think it just tells you something about Elizabeth Warren. And Buttigieg isn't really known that well nationwide. Um, a lot of you guys said that this effect would possibly wear off. We'll see. I really want to pay attention to him because I think that this could actually be uh, a very interesting candidate uh, regardless. But let's go ahead and ignore the Massachusetts polls for right now. Let's focus on these two 2020 Democratic presidential nomination polls. Joe Biden leads by 17 percent in the Hill slash Harris X poll. That is insane. A 17 percent lead in the Democratic primary. It's almost for sure that you're going to win. But is it though? If we're looking at the poll from the morning consult plus nine for biden he typically does from eight all the way down to four percent but he typically leads in the morning consult poll this new the hill slash harris x poll shows biden leading by 17 percent. that is insane but it's not just about joe biden leading bernie sanders this is not a two-person race every single candidate here has announced except for joe biden or has an exploratory committee which we already know is going to turn into a regular campaign um, but Buttigieg is at an average of 2.9 percent but in the most recent polls he's gotten five percent four percent four percent uh two percent and obviously that's not the best thing but he's beating a senator another senator andrew yang a former secretary a governor a former governor from colorado you know all these named people that really were essentially drafted to run by a number of democrats are losing to a mayor from Indiana. I think that we should really pay attention to him. And I think in coming polls, he could possibly overtake Booker, possibly Warren. I think he could max out at fifth place. But a lot can change under the Democratic primary uh, debates in June. So we'll see how those turn out for a number of Democrats there. But Joe Biden, 32%, 36%. Okay, this is actually consistent with what we've been seeing. We've seen Joe Biden in the uh, low 30s, high 20s, but 36% is pretty much his peak. In fact, if we look back, the last time he was above 36% was here. Emerson in January with a 45% lead, and that was a throw-off poll. I mean, Biden plus 37%, that wasn't real um, data, to be honest. I mean, Emerson, uh, sort of notorious for things like that, but that wasn't really something that we could take into effect. Um, but if we're looking here, Emerson shows him at 45%. Go down here. I don't think he's actually have a lead as large as the one in that poll. Uh, besides that, I mean, he's at 35%. Uh, I don't see 36%. Maybe it's uh, slipping away from me. But if we're looking at that, 36% is a large amount. We're looking at a candidate that hasn't even announced yet. And again, the argument that still stands that if he announces and he starts talking, his support is going to go down. I see that uh, as a valid standpoint. But the fact that he's having the support, especially with all of this happening in the media. This isn't like these polls were taken before. These are April 9th, April 8th. These are polls that were taken recently. And I get it. They do start some of these polls ahead of time. So we're going to wait for more data. But Biden isn't taking too much of a hit. In fact, it looks like he may actually be expanding his base. And by no means am I saying that because he has, you know, in the past touched women and made them uncomfortable, given him support amongst Democrats. But I'm saying that it's, it's interesting that he's not really losing that much support, especially to someone like Bernie Sanders, who really could capitalize on something like this and isn't. If we're looking at the rest of the Democrats, all of them are in single digits. Uh, Harris is at 9% in both polls, then a followed by O'Rourke. I think it's interesting that O'Rourke is in fourth place nationwide. I just think that's something to point out uh, over Warren, Booker, Buttigieg, everyone. Um, especially since he just recently lost an election in the state of Texas. Um, but it's also important to look at these candidates for where they're going to throw their support to when they're eliminated from the race. Okay, Yang, Castro, Inslee, Hickenlooper, Gillibrand, Klobuchar, Buttigieg, Booker. Be honest with yourself. They're probably not going to be in this race for much longer. Um, by much longer, I mean like about a year from now, they'll probably drop out. And where are their supporters going to go? 
Buttigieg is probably going to go to a split between Sanders and Biden, or Rourke is probably going to go uh, to Biden. Warren's probably going to go to Sanders. You know, there's a whole lot of uh, ideas as to where these supporters are going to go. So I do think that it is important to note that, um, number one, these top two candidates are gaining uh, more voters, probably because they're pulling them away from those 1%, 2% candidates saying they have no shot, electability is an issue, things like that that really worked in 2016 as well. Um, and if we're looking at the uh, overall, I guess, amount of support for a number of these Democrats, I think that it is something to note that they are not um, – they are not really growing. If we're just looking at uh, someone like Joe Biden, Joe Biden has pretty much been consistent with his lead. In fact, it's actually gone up uh, since February, uh, early March times, and it's about 8.6% nationwide. But if we're looking at the number of these Democrats, they've been peaking at 1%, 2%. Okay, nationwide, Castro um, at one point was at 8%, but I, that, again, Emerson poll. Um, Castro around 1%, Inslee around 1%, Hickenlooper around 1%. Buttigieg is the only one who's really seen somewhat of growth. Uh, Klobuchar has been actually gone down. Um, you know, Warren's been around the same. In fact, she's actually gone down by maybe one to two percentage points. Um, O'Rourke stayed around the same. Harris has maybe gone down. Uh, Sanders has grown. Biden has grown uh, from where he was before a couple months ago. And I do think that's pretty interesting that a lot of these big name candidates that are essentially no name people in this race, um, no shot candidates that are the biggest names in the Democratic Party but have no real shot at the dom nomination, um, they aren't really improving either. So I think all that could be taken into consideration when we're looking at these 2020 Democratic primary polls. Uh, it's overall a lot of uh, interesting information and, you know, just looking at it, there's a lot to go into uh, and a lot more to go in depth. So I'm probably going to make another video about uh, this new Hill Harris poll uh, and morning console poll because I do think that there's something uh, deeper than this than just a Biden plus 17, you know, service level, uh, I guess, I, I, mm, idea that Biden is now leading by double digits nationwide. That argument can be made by recent data, but uh, it's not exactly going to be the strongest uh, argument. I think that it is a question as to whether or not Biden is going to improve uh, based off what's happened in recent events, or he's going to dip down. So far, data showing that he might be improving or staying around the same. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.